back in Texas, got my internet back up. Uh, moving forward from the previous video on muscle building, where we talked about rep ranges, so five to 30 being the generally accepted uh, kind of left and right limits there for hypertrophy, we're gonna move on to the next most important thing uh, that I believe is fundamental to constructing a solid, uh, really any kind of resistance-based uh, program, but specifically for hypertrophy, which is exercise selection, and then that dovetails into uh, SFR or stimulus to fatigue ratio. Once we have an understanding of these two things, and then incorporate that into the five to 30 rep concept, we'll be able to construct individual sessions, individual workouts that target a particular area or a particular group of muscles that we're trying to hypertrophy. And so we kind of have one larger piece now, uh, one building block in the context of designing an entire uh, training split. And then in the larger context of designing a, you know, a fully periodized training block or blocks. So an entire program moving forward. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine what the focus of our session of our workout's gonna be, all right? I say all the time, don't just go to the gym or outside or in your apartment or whatever and move around to burn calories. I see it all the time. It's better than nothing. I mean, look, if you're exercising at all, good on you, do your thing. But we can do better, all right? So once we determine our training focus, like let's say, for instance, we're training chest. Tomorrow's Monday, International Chest Day, right? Everyone's gonna be in the gym. All the benches are gonna be taken. All the dumbbells are gonna be taken. Everybody's working on chest. People are in the corner doing push-ups. It's International Chest Day, let's go. All right, so we're gonna hit chest first. A general rule of thumb, and remember, there's lots of ways to do this, but I'm, I'm approaching this as if you've never touched a weight in your life, and this is the first video you've ever seen on the subject, okay? Generally speaking, what you wanna do is you wanna hit the big muscle groups in the context of that focus. So remember, we're, we're pressing as our focus, so our big muscle group is gonna be the pec major. Right? So we wanna hit the big muscle groups early in the session when fatigue is low and we have the most energy, both physically and mentally, to concentrate on and put as much effort possible into the major movements that are gonna hit those body parts. So like our bench, our dumbbells, our incline, our big presses where we can use a lot of different muscles, but the primary ones that we're trying to grow in order to move that weight. In general, we wanna go big movements to small movements, heavier movements to lighter movements. Or you can think of and put a pin in this, more fatiguing movements to less fatiguing movements. Because of course, at the beginning of your session, you have more energy to commit towards those things. Like for instance, if you did a bunch of hamstring curls and uh, back raises and shrugs. And then at the end of all that, you try to do your max deadlift, you can't. Because you fatigued all the little things involved in doing that big thing. So if you were trying to move the most weight in a deadlift, you would do it earlier in your session, if that were your goal. But remember, we're talking about chest. We want to choose exercises that check these boxes. Can you do it hard enough properly, right? So by hard enough, I mean, can you come within close enough proximity to failure? You don't necessarily have to go to failure, but it needs to be sufficiently difficult. Uh, it needs to be heavy enough that there is perturbation, disruption in the muscle, whatever that means relative to your strength level. Can you do it hard enough properly for reps, right? So like, can you do it hard enough properly? In other words, like how, how heavy or how intensely can you lift but with good form? 
couple of things come into play there. Number one is safety. And number two, are we actually using the correct muscles? And then doing it just once or twice is not gonna be sufficient. Because remember in the last video, we talked about five to 30 reps is important because we need a high fidelity of signal, but we need enough of that signal. And that's where our repetitions come into play. So just doing like one or two heavy efforts isn't good enough. We need to be able to do at least five reps of this thing. But if form breaks down after like the first two reps, it's no good. We want it to be heavy enough that it's disruptive, but we can do it for at least five, right? And then the last box we need to think about is, is the fatigue cost worth the effort? So here's a good point to kind of jump into the whole SFR discussion, stimulus to fatigue ratio, okay? So what stimulus to fatigue ratio is, is it's a description of the relationship between how much stimulus, so how much uh, fidelity of signal, of training effect you get from a movement versus how much effort and recovery on the tail end it's gonna cost you. So some movements are extremely stimulative, like deadlifts, for instance, but there is a tremendous fatigue cost to them. It's why once you get to a certain strength level, you can't do very low SFR things that often. You know, some of the strongest people on the planet can only do their competition lifts uh, for maxes, you know, every 10 days, every two weeks, every month, because to move as much weight as they can move, it's super fatiguing. It doesn't scale linearly, right? So like, as you get stronger, it's not like, it's not like stronger, more fatigue, stronger, more fatigue. It's not like a nice linear progression. It's you get a little bit stronger, more fatigue, a little bit stronger, more fatigue, a little bit stronger, more fatigue. It's, <clears throat> it's a sharp, a uh, very steep upswing in fatigue incrementally for each unit of strength that you gain. Okay, so I thought I could fit it all in one video. I'm gonna make this a two-parter. So that covers exercise selection and stimulus to fatigue ratio. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna cover kind of taking that information and then determining from that the number of total exercises you do and then the main, uh, the total of primary exercises versus accessory movements. Stay in the fight.